Hello students. Welcome to our channel Feynman Institute of Physics. Today we will be discussing the physics question paper and I hope you all done well in today's exam. So let us start our discussion. So first let let us discuss the part one of part A of the question paper. So the first question is fill in the blanks question. Uh, we have given a statement. The force between two point charges is directly proportional to the product of and inversely proportional to distance of them. So this, if you have studied, this is basically the statement of Coulomb's law. So in Coulomb's law, we have a point charge, two point charges, say Q1 and Q2. And the distance between the two charges is R. Then the force, the electrostatic force of attraction or repulsion between the two point charges is proportional to the product of the magnitude of the two charges and is inversely proportional to the square of the distance between the two charges. So here the answer is directly proportional to the product of charge and inversely proportional to the uh, the square of the distance square of the distance between them so here you should write square square of the distance between them so that is the answer for the first question now let us move on to the second question So the second question is the expression given here is corresponds to which of the following laws. So let me change. So the answer is second Gauss's law and magnetism. Because you have studied in your textbook that this, this equation surface integral of B dot ds is equal to zero, right? So this is analogous to our Gauss's law in electrostatics, which, which would read surface integral E dot ds is equal to one by epsilon zero Q. Likewise here, uh, we, have a, we have a surface and we have a magnet here, which has North pole and a South pole and the magnetic field lines will always form continuous loops. It starts from the North Pole and ends in the South Pole. So here the surface integral of B dot ds or the flux is zero, right? So which means that number of lines which are created from the North Pole will join the South Pole. So this, this statement shows that there will be no magnetic monopoles. Otherwise we can state that ma magnets always <coughs> or magnetic charge does not exist there will be only magnet which has both the north and south poles. So the answer is very clear. It is Gauss's law in magnetism because it's analogous to Gauss's law in electrostatics. Okay, now let's move on to the third question. So, so this third question is a little bit confusing question, but uh, it is a very important application of this applied optics in medicine. So this uh, LASIK eye surgery is a application of lasers in medicine or eye surgery. So in uh, uh, in this in this application we use uh, lasers or excimic lasers, which are basically ultraviolet rays, which consist of so which are used for treating uh, our eyes. So Students may have doubted this question, but the answer is ultraviolet rays. Yeah, so it's a very important application of our lasers or applied optics in medicine. Now, uh, question number four is very simple. It's a, it's a direct question, right? So write the lens makers formula. So you have studied this in the class. Lens makers formula is basically one by R is equal to n2 by n1 
minus 1 into 1 by r1 minus 1 by r2. You can simply write this expression and don't forget to explain each terms in this equation. So n1 and n2 are refractive indexes and r1 and r2 are the radius of curvature of the these lenses. So that's a very easy question. Now let's move on to the fifth question. So name the property of light that provide that proves its transverse nature. So we have studied that light is a transverse wave, right? So transverse means means the propagation, <clears throat> the electric field and magnetic field of light is is perpendicular to the direction of propagation. For example, if the light is propagating in the z direction, see here. So this is the direction of propagation of light. Then we can see that the electric field is in the direction perpendicular to that of the direction of propagation. And we know that light is an electromagnetic wave, right? So it, it also have another, it also have a component of magnetic field, which is also perpendicular to the direction of propagation. So this is the B field. If I draw an axis here, then this would be B field. So electric and magnetic field are both perpendicular to the direction of propagation of the wave. So it is called as a transverse wave. Now, how can we prove this, that light is a transverse? So for that, we use uh, this property of light known as polarization. So you have studied polarization in your optics chapter. So if we have a, if we place a polarizer here, and and we if we allow a, a a light wave to pass through it, which is unpolarized. So unpolarized light means it it can have uh, it it can have oscillations in all possible direction vibrations in. Right, so it can have electric field in all the directions, all the three directions. So once we place a, a polarizer here, then the light will be only that light which are parallel to the uh, this polarization axis of this polarizer will be allowed. All other directions will be filtered out or rejected. So we will get polarized light here. Right. So how will we distinguish, how will we physically distinguish between a polarized and unpolarized light? Because both of them are light. This light has a particular intensity and a color or a wavelength. Similarly, this light also have a particular intensity and wavelength. So how can we distinguish between them? So for that, we use another polarizer or, a, or, a, or an analyzer. <laughs> okay, so let me draw another one. So if I place another polarizer here, say P2, and and if I rotate this second polarizer by a 90 degree, so that the polarization axis of this first and second polarizer are crossed, then no light will be passing through this second polarizer. So which which proves that our light or electromagnetic radiation is transverse in nature. So this is a simple experiment in which which proves that light is transverse in nature. If light was in a longitudinal wave, then this phenomenon could not be happen. So let me erase this. Yeah. Great. Okay. So the answer of the question is polarization. Let me write it here. Now, name the property of light that, okay, that we I have explained. Sorry, this should be, okay, okay. Now, sixth question. So, let me, so this is the answer of fifth question. Okay, now, a uh, fifth question. Now, okay, sixth question is write the, Equation for wavelength of de Broglie wave, so of a particle, of a moving particle. So we know that matter waves, 
wave matter has a wave nature or wave nature of particle so electrons or some particles when it travels a wave is associated with it which is the dual nature of matter so this is uh, the equation of de broglie equation is lambda is equal to h by p or h by mv where v is the velocity of the particle m is the mass of the particle h is the planck's constant so the wavelength or the matter wave wavelength associated with matter wave is inversely proportional to the momentum of the particle so this is the equation so sixth question is also a direct question now let's move on to the next question okay so the second uh, seventh question is the energy of an electron in an nth orbit of hydrogen atom is given with by this equation so they have given the equation and the question is what energy is required to make an electron free from the first orbit of hydrogen atom so so this is a very very interesting question okay so you know the energy diagram of an hydrogen atom so if we draw it, the figure we have first energy level n equal to 1 then we have second energy level third fourth etc etc we have infinite number of energy levels right starting from so if i mark the quantum number n principal quantum number n then i can have the values n equal to 1 2 3 1 trap to i can have to infinite values and if i plot the energy so if i plot the this is the energy axis corresponding to each level then energy of the first excited state would be as per this equation it would be minus 13.6 electron volt right similarly this would be uh minus 13.6 let me check minus 3.4 electron volt isn't it minus 3.4 electron volt similarly we can find the energy levels of third fourth etc now so in order to free this electron so we have an electron which is sitting in the first energy level here this is an electron so we have to uh, somehow uh free this electron so electron should electron should be uh electron should be free from the attraction of the nucleus for that uh, the energy should be infinity so here we can see that all these energy levels having a negative energy so negative energy means attractive potential or attraction or bonding so in order to break a bond and so that electron is free we have to give some energy to break that bond so that energy is known as ionization energy so the amount of energy required to break this bond in a hydrogen atom so that the electron in the first orbit is free from the nucleus so that would be equal to this delta e right so that so this energy at infinity the energy corresponding to the inf infinite uh, infinite level would be that me write it would be equal to zero right so at infinity there is no energy there is no potential energy it is zero so the amount of energy required to free this electron is equal to plus 13.6 isn't it 13.6 electron volt so if we supply this much of energy to the electron or the atom then the electron will be free from the uh, this hydrogen atom so that's the answer minus 13.6 electron volt okay now i'll explain the last question of part a so if the radius of a first electron orbit of hydrogen is a not find the radius of a second electron orbit of hydrogen so a not is a not here is the bohr radius so so uh, nth orbit rn is equal to a not into n squared by z this is the formula for radius of nth orbit right where a not is the 
bore radius which uh, whose value is around 0.528 angstrom or something right so this we know and it is directly proportional to the square of the quantum number and inversely proportional to the <coughs> atomic number but for hydrogen atom the atomic number is z is 1 so here rn is equal to a0 into n squared and it is given that n equal to 2 because electron is in the second orbit right first orbit second second orbit so n equal to 2 so the radius would be equal to 2 squared which would be 4 into a0 and you can substitute the value of a0 and you can find the exact value of the radius of second orbit or you you don't have to submit because this value was not given in the question you can just write it as 4a note that would be enough okay let me erase all these lines so so thank you all for watching this video subscribe the channel uh, today i could not uh, upload this video i i could not upload this video earlier because i was i had some i was busy with some other work and i i don't have time to uh, <coughs> upload the full solution so i am only uploading up to this eighth question which is the part a of the question paper and i can, I, i think you can uh, you can see the other question paper in from your textbook so thank you all for watching this video and good luck for your next exam